sometimes it's nice to just shut off your brain and have a good time. You know what game is a good time? Secret of Mana. Doop 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 Secret of Mana is the English name of an action RPG that was released for the Super Famicom in 1993 under the name Saiken Densetsu 2. It was directed by Koichi Ishii, who had also worked on Final Fantasies 1 through 3, Final Fantasy Legend, and Mana's predecessor, Final Fantasy Adventure. He would later go on to direct Trials of Mana, and even to produce some Zelda games and Luigi's Mansion. Secret of Mana was... Secret of Mana... <laughs> I need to d decide at some point whether I'm going to say mana or mana. We'll see what comes out of my mouth. Okay. Secret of Mana was produced by Hiromichi Tanaka, who had also previously worked on Final Fantasies 1 through 3, and would go on to work on Saiken Densetsu 3, Xenogears, Chrono Cross, and Final Fantasies 11 and 14. Some interesting facts that I learned from my extensive research on the development of this game. This was originally going to be Final Fantasy IV. It was given the codename Chrono Trigger before it became Saiken Densetsu II. It was originally supposed to be released on the SNES CD, which was supposed to be made by Sony, but the plans fell through and Sony went on to make a little console called the PlayStation. Perhaps you've heard of it. In its SNES CD form, the game was supposed to have multiple routes that you could take and multiple endings but the planned game would have been far too big for an SNES cartridge. This is a much loved game and for good reason. I love this game too, but not for the reasons I usually love games. For starters, let's talk about the story. The world this story takes place in is amazing. It's cohesive, it's interesting, it's vibrant. Where the game falters is in its pacing and its tropes. Most of the plot points of this game could be pretty quickly guessed other than a few points at the end of the game. The pacing is a bit rough, honestly. You spend a large chunk at the beginning of the game in just a few locations bouncing back and forth between them before quite literally ping-ponging across the world map via the cannon travel system. When you finally gain the ability to fly, the game weirdly slows down more on flight later. The characters are similarly fine, but not great. The heroes, Randy isn't a silent protagonist at least. I couldn't say much about his personality though. Prim is allowed to feel some big emotions, and a lot of the NPCs feel especially connected to her, so I like her more. Popoy probably has the most personality, but I also hate him the most. More 90s shitty teen humor. The villains and NPCs all fare a bit better. When it comes to the villains, Eleni, Elena, Eleni. I should just like put a disclaimer in front of all videos that my pronunciations are going to be different from yours probably, and that's okay. I'm allowed to be wrong. <laughs> Alright, anyway, when it comes to villains, Eleni is interesting. Thanatos is a big old trope, but he's still fun. And it's always great to have bumbling villains like the Scorpion Army. Of the other generals of the Empire, Geshtar has the most screen time, and I like his desperate, surely this time, feeling each of the three times you face him in battle. The Emperor himself is nothing, though, and literally who are Sheiks and Fana? NPCs from earlier in the game are typically more fun. Gemma, Luca, and Watts fill their roles admirably. Most everyone else is forgettable, but I need to call out Rudolph and Santa for a big ol' what the fuck square. One big issue in the game is dialogue. The game was hastily translated, possibly in time for a 1993 holiday release, and a lot of the text had to be cut to literally fit on the screen. The translation is definitely rough, and that's too bad. Basically, the rest of the game is excellent. The graphics are super clean and still look good today. The design is a definite high point of the game. The character designs are good, but not great but the towns, dungeons, and monsters are all excellent. I'm a little sad that most of the Final Fantasy designs didn't continue from Final Fantasy Adventure to this game. We only get Moogles. The monsters are just as cute in Secret of Mana as they are in Final Fantasy Adventure, though. But now, can we talk about the music in this game? It was composed by Hiroki Kikuta, and it was his first game. Way to come out of the gate swinging, dude. <laughs> the game's music is so excellent. 
You've been hearing my cover of A Curious Tale playing in the background this whole time. Kikuto was inspired by music from Bali, which is quickly noticeable in the song Ceremony, which is probably my favorite in the game. After this game, the only games that I really know much about that Kikuto wrote scores for were the other mana games. Now for our last category, gameplay. This game is just so smooth and so fun. Movement and attacking feel really nice. The camera never gets in your way, and the learning curve is just right. I love being able to switch between the characters, and I'd really love to play this game with a second player sometime. The skill rings work well, even if they take a little bit of time sometimes to get to the right node on the right ring for the right character. One slight dig in the game is that it requires a bit more grinding than I'd like, but that's to be expected from games of this time. No, the only real gameplay gripe I have is flying on Flammy. Though Flammy is absolutely adorable and I want one for myself, flying around on Flammy just doesn't feel good. Part of what works about flight in most JRPGs is we've seen a lot of the world map before we're able to fly, so we know where things are, roughly. If we're asked to fly back to some place we've been before, it's extra hard in this game because we don't actually know what it looks like on the world map. The first person perspective doesn't help either. It's very difficult to get a good feel for where things are in relation to each other. Flying looks cool and we get the exhilaration of flight, but it's just not as practical as I'd like it here. I hate to leave this game on a bad note though, because all in all it's excellent and a huge improvement over Final Fantasy Adventure. My nitpicky individual scores add up to an 87%, but I feel like this game deserves a 97%. Average those together and this game gets a 92%, or an A-. This game is available on the SNES, the SNES Classic, and the Nintendo Switch as part of the collection of Mana. There's an iOS port, there's a 3D remake for the PS4 and PS Vita and Windows. This game is fairly easily available and you should definitely check it out. Thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed this review. Please let me know if you agree or disagree with my points, or if I missed anything important. See y'all soon, maintain your groovy selves.